Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Valsa Williams with the Midday News. The headlines. Death toll in yesterday's serial blasts in Sri Lanka mounts to 290. Sri Lankan government says local group national Zawheed Jamaat is behind the attacks. All arrangements in place for tomorrow's polling for third phase of Lok Sabha elections, withdrawal of nominations for fifth phase ends today, notification being issued for seventh and final phase. Congress releases its candidates for six of seven Lok Sabha seats in Delhi. Congress President Rahul Gandhi expresses regret in Supreme Court over his remarks on Prime Minister Narendra Modi regarding Rafal verdict, matter to be heard tomorrow. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals to take on Delhi Capitals at Jaipur this evening. The death toll in yesterday's serial blasts in Sri Lanka has risen to 290 with more than 500 people injured. As many as 32 foreign nationals, including five Indians, are among those killed. The Sri Lankan government today said a local religious group, National Tawheed Jamaat, is behind the attacks. Addressing a press conference, Cabinet Minister and Government Spokesman Rajita Sena Ratna said international support behind the attacks is being investigated. Our Colombo correspondent has filed this report. The Lankan government has been taken aback by yesterday's incident despite prior intelligent input and expressed apology to the nation and its people for the ghastly attack. The minister said they can't believe that suicide bombers were prepared without backing of any foreign organization and investigations are on in this regard. Security checkouts are being carried out at sensitive locations to avoid recurrence of more such attacks. The incident further exposed lack of political unity within the government and prime minister was not able to call a meeting of security council yesterday as president was out of the country. The The government is trying its best to give confidence to foreign investors and tourists, which has taken a hit. Santos Kumar, Koreaia News, from Colombo. 24 local suspects have been arrested across the country. President Maitripala Sirisena has announced the appointment of a special committee led by a retired Supreme Court judge to investigate the attacks and submit its report within two weeks. An improvised explosive device was detected and diffused near the departure area of Vandar Naike. International Airport last evening security has been tightened at all sensitive places police curfew will be in place from 8 pm to 4 am tomorrow schools are closed till tomorrow while universities have been instructed to close down till further notice the interpol has said it is ready to offer full support to the sri lankan authorities in investigating the terror attacks Interpol Secretary General Jurgen Stock said in a tweet that Interpol can deploy an incident response team at the request of a member country to provide on-site support during a crisis situation. All arrangements are in place for tomorrow's polling for the third phase of Lok Sabha elections. 116 constituencies spread over 13 states and two union territories are going to polls in this phase. Voting will take place for all 26 constituencies in Gujarat, all 20 in Kerala, 14 each in Maharashtra and Karnataka, 10 in Uttar Pradesh, 7 in Chhattisgarh, 6 in Odisha, 5 each in Bihar and West Bengal, 4 in Assam, 2 in Goa, 1 each in Jammu and Kashmir, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu and Tripura. The political fate of several prominent leaders of various parties will be decided in this phase. BJP President Amit Shah, Congress Chief Rahul Gandhi, Samajwadi Party leader Mulayam Singh Yadav and RJD leader Sharad Yadav are among them. In Gujarat, over 4 crore electorate will decide the fate of 371 candidates in the fray for 26 Lok Sabha seats and 45 candidates for bipol in four assembly seats. Our correspondent has filed this report. Elaborate security arrangements have been made in Gujarat for free, fair and peaceful polling tomorrow. About 125,000 security personnel have been deployed on all sensitive and hypersensitive polling sessions in the state. More than 200 companies of paramilitary forces including state reserve police force, central reserve police force and rapid action force have been placed on duty. Electoral staff along with EVMs and VVPAT machines will reach to their respective polling stations by this evening. Election commission has also set up model polling stations all women polling stations and divyang polling stations in the state yogesh pandya air news ahmedabad 
in Uttar Pradesh interstate and inter-district borders have been sealed and intensive trekking is underway for free and fair elections. There are 120 candidates, including 14 women in the fray. Their political fate will be decided by more than 1 crore 76 lakh voters. Our Patna correspondent reports on the arrangements in Bihar. Javans of Central Armed Police Forces will be deployed at all booths of Janjarpur, Supal, Araria, Madhepura and Khagaria. Over 57,000 police personnel will be on duty in this phase. One helicopter each in Purnia and Saharsa and an air ambulance in Patna will be stationed to meet any eventuality during polling. Indo-Nepal border has been sealed and patrolling has been intensified. Flag march was taken out in many areas of Madhepura, Khagaria and Araria to instill confidence among electorates. Over 58,000 polling staff have been deployed. Out of 9,076 polling booths, 3,299 have been declared critical. Over 2,000 micro-observers will be deployed to oversee the election process. With KK Lal's report, Anuja Bhardwajan, AIR News. In Chhattisgarh, 123 candidates are testing their electoral fortunes from seven Lok Sabha constituencies going to polls tomorrow. A report. The Election Commission will monitor the activities of various teams deployed for the polling process through CTOP, a tracking of polling process software. More than 15,000 polling stations have been set up in seven Lok Sabha constituencies where balloting is scheduled for tomorrow. One polling station at Sheradan village in Korea district only has four voters. More than 1 crore 27 lakh voters are eligible to exercise their franchise in the third and last phase of general elections in the state. Out of this, 63 3 lakh are female voters. Tight security arrangements are in place to conduct free and fair elections. Security forces have conducted flag march in different cities and towns of the state. Vikal Shukla, AIR News, Raipur. Our Pune correspondent takes a look at the poll scenario in Maharashtra. Stage is all set for third phase elections in Maharashtra. Tomorrow, fate of 249 candidates will be decided by 2 crore 57 lakh 89,938 voters from 14 constituencies. Highest number of 31 candidates are in fray from Pune and Madha. Sangli has the lowest number of candidates. Over 56,000 ballot units and more than 35,000 control units are made available for voting and 1,41,113 strong workforce is deployed for conducting election process. Majority of constituencies from Maharashtra in third phase are from Sugar Belt and the April 23 polls will decide the political fate of some of the biggest political clans in the state such as the Pawars, the Mohite Patils and the late Vasanna Patil's family. Nitin Kekar for AIR News, Pune. In Kerala, 227 candidates, including 23 women, will fight it out for the 20 Lok Sabha seats. More from our correspondent. State Police Chief Lagnath Behra informed that all security arrangements are in place to ensure peaceful polling and additional security arrangements are made for sensitive boats. Central Armed Reserve Police had been posted in 272 places which are identified as sensitive, in 162 places which are shortlisted as left wing extremist affected and in 245 boats as well. More than 50,000 policemen including 3,500 women are also deployed. Apart from these 55 companies of CRPF, BSF and CASF soldiers, 2,000 police personnel from Tamil Nadu, 1,000 from Karnataka and 11,000 781 special police officers are also deployed. Among the prominent candidates whose fate will be sealed tomorrow include Congress President Rahul Gandhi who is seeking election from Vayanad, Union Minister K.J. Alphonse from Ernakulam, Shashi Tharoor of UDF from Tirvanandapuram and UDF candidate E.T. Muhammad Bashir from Panani. Shamila, AAR News, Tirvanandapuram. Notification for the seventh and final phase is being issued today. As many as 59 seats covering seven states and one union territory will go to polls in this phase on the 19th of next month. Today is the last day for withdrawal of nominations for the fifth phase, in which 51 seats will go to polls on the 6th of next month. Meanwhile, campaigning for the remaining phases is gaining momentum. Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi is addressing public meetings in Maharashtra and Rajasthan today. Addressing a rally at Nastik in Maharashtra, Mr. Modi appeals to people to vote for a strong India. He said BJP has tried its best to take development to the doorstep of each and every person. BJP President Amit Shah said the nationwide NRC will be implemented if his party comes back to power. 
at the center. Addressing a press conference at Kolkata in West Bengal this morning, Mr. Shah asserted that citizenship amendment bill will be passed in the Rajya Sabha before taking up the NRC issue. Congress President Rahul Gandhi is campaigning in Uttar Pradesh today. Addressing a rally in Amethi, Mr. Gandhi said the BJP wittingly stalled the Congress's developmental programs in the constituency. Political activities have gained momentum in Delhi as only two days are left for filing of nominations for seven Lok Sabha seats in the city. Polling will be held in the national capital on the sixth phase on the 12th of next month. BJP has so far released names of four candidates. Union Minister Dr. Harshwardhan will file his nomination from his sitting seat, Chandni Chowk, Delhi BJP Chief Manoj Tiwari from Northeast Delhi, and Pravesh Varma from West Delhi today. Putting an end to the possibility of an alliance with the Ahmadmi Party, the Congress today declared six candidates for Delhi. Former Chief Minister Sheila Dikshit will contest from Northeast Delhi, Ajay Makan from New Delhi, Mahabal Mishra from West Delhi, J.P. Agarwal from Chandni Chowk, Arvinder Singh Lovely from East Delhi, and Rajesh Lodhia from Northwest Delhi. Former Deputy Election Commissioner Vinod Zucci has been appointed as Special Observer for Tripura, where the Lok Sabha polls to one of the seats was postponed in view of the law and order situation. The Election Commission had last Tuesday postponed polling in the Tripura East Lok Sabha seat, saying the prevailing law and order situation there is not conducive for holding free and fair polls. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. News Services Division of All India Radio is broadcasting a special live program, Janadesh 2019, on the developments related to the general elections 2019. Tune in to the FM Gold channel of AIR from 4 or 5 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. every day till the announcement of results to listen to this special program. Congress President Rahul Gandhi today filed an affidavit in the Supreme Court expressing regret over his remarks on Prime Minister Narendra Modi regarding the Rafal verdict. The remarks the Apex Court had said were incorrectly attributed to it. The court had last week directed Mr. Gandhi to give his explanation by today. In the affidavit, the Congress President said he had made the statement in the heat of political campaigning which has been misused by his opponents. The court had sought Mr. Gandhi's explanation on a petition filed by BJP MP Minakshi Lekhi. The Apex Court is scheduled to hear the matter tomorrow. The Election Commission EC today submitted its detailed report to the Supreme Court on the biopic of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. A bench headed by Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi took the EC's report and asked the poll panel to give a copy of the report to the producer of the movie. The court has fixed the plea of the producers challenging the EC's ban on the movie for hearing on Friday. The Supreme Court has directed the Madras High Court to decide on Wednesday a plea of TikTok app seeking vacating of its ban order. A bench headed by the Chief Justice said if the High Court fails to decide on the plea, then its ban order will stand vacated. Jet Airways non-executive and non-independent director Naseem Zaidi has quit the board. Mr. Zaidi, the former Chief Election Commissioner and ex-Civil Aviation Secretary, joined the Jet Airways board in August last year. Grounded carrier Jet Airways today informed that Mr. Zaidi resigned from the post, citing personal reasons and constraints of time. In IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals will take on Delhi Capitals at Jaipur this evening. The match will begin at 8 p.m. Delhi is currently third in the eight-team points table behind leaders Chennai Super Kings and second-placed Mumbai Indians. Defending champions Chennai, who lost to bottom-placed Royal Challengers Bangalore by just one run last night, has 14 points from 10 matches. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Death toll in yesterday's serial blasts in Sri Lanka mounts to 290. Sri Lankan government says local group National Tawheed Jamaat is behind the attacks. All arrangements in place for tomorrow's polling for third phase of Lok Sabha elections. Withdrawal of nominations for fifth phase ends today. Notification being issued for seventh and final phase. 
Congress announces its candidates for six of seven Lok Sabha seats in Delhi. Congress President Rahul Gandhi expresses regret in Supreme Court over his remarks on Prime Minister Narendra Modi regarding Rafale verdict, matter to be heard tomorrow. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals to take on Delhi Capitals at Jaipur this evening. And with that, we end the midday news.